My name is Dr. Tony Pease and I'm going to talk to you about the ultrasound appearance of the pancreas, both normal pancreas as well as when abnormalities occur. The pancreas is actually a very difficult organ to evaluate just because radiographically it's the same opacity as the remaining structures in the cranial abdomen. It's sandwiched in between the stomach and the transverse colon and until it becomes abnormal really you can't see it. And so when it becomes abnormal in a radiograph, the soft tissue opacity of the pancreas is really only seen because of the mass effect it creates. Inflammation will generate uh, a small amount of peritoneal effusion, and so because of that, you'll also lose some serosal detail in the cranial abdomen, but it's a very vague radiographic finding, and that's just because you can't actually see the pancreas just because it's similar to the surrounding structures on radiographs. And this is why ultrasound is so useful. Ultrasound allows us to actually see the pancreas and be able to see the enlargement and the pancreatic changes associated with inflammation and neoplasia. When you're looking at the pancreas, the biggest thing to realize is that it's the largest at the body of the pancreas. The body of the pancreas is sandwiched right in the pylorus and it follows along the greater curvature of the stomach. But we usually talk about the body of the pancreas because that's the thickest portion of the pancreas that you can see. So when you're trying to look at it at an ultrasound, the biggest thing that we will do is we will try to be as far cranial in the abdomen as we can, just caudal to the liver right at the level of the pylorus. In cats, the left limb of the pancreas is what we generally will identify. And the reason we can see that is because it's in a very finite place. It goes along the greater curvature of the stomach and it is actually lays in between the spleen, which is going to be your lateral landmark. So the pancreas will never be more lateral than the spleen. It's going to be caudal to the stomach and cranial to the transverse colon. Why do we even do pancreatic ultrasound? Most of the time we're going to do it when we suspect pancreatitis, but a lot of times we're actually ultrasounding the pancreas and pancreatic region because you have a non-responsive or undiagnosed cause for vomiting. If you think that there's a mass in the region of the pancreas and you're trying to figure out on radiographs, is this coming from the stomach or is it coming from the pancreas or even the transverse colon, ultrasound is able to make that determination for you or at least help you identify which organs are being involved. If you suspect a biliary obstruction, especially in cats, the major duna papilla houses both the bile duct, which will come from the gallbladder, and then it also allows the pancreatic duct to drain into the duodenum. So in cats, if they actually have an obstruction of the pancreatic duct, they can get a secondary cholestasis, and vice versa, if they have extrahepatic cholestasis, they can cause a secondary pancreatitis because of this. If we're also having an undiagnosed abdominal pain, then ultrasound is usually very nice to be able to at least look in that area to determine if you have pancreatitis or not. So why do we even choose pancreatic ultrasound? Mainly because it's very non-invasive when we do ultrasound. And really it's not to diagnose pancreatitis as much as it's to evaluate severity. Most of the time, clinicians actually understand that yes, they have all the clinical signs of pancreatitis, they have blood work abnormalities suggestive of pancreatitis. What we're trying to do with ultrasound is to determine how bad it is, and then also repeat ultrasounds to try to figure out whether it's basically getting worse or getting better. We can also evaluate structures around the pancreas. For example, if we have a pancreatitis, it's not uncommon to have a secondary colitis or gastritis associated with it. And we can also identify any sort of complications associated with pancreatitis or pancreatic neoplasia. We can look at associated lymph nodes, and that will help us to try to further evaluate not just the pancreas, but all the surrounding structures.